Hey everyone, today you are about to take a crash course in SAS. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my crash course on SAS, but you could watch this full course about getting started with SAS and improving your CSS workflow at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. So you're about to begin a crash course in SAS from a very beginner's levels perspective. So I'm going to assume that you've never touched SAS before. Maybe you've heard about it, but you really don't have an understanding of how to exactly use it or integrate it. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to get up and running and using it. So we're gonna do it by example because I'm a huge advocate of learning by example, not just based on theory and all that stuff. So the project that we're gonna to use to help us learn how to use SAS, this is just a very simple modern looking landing page and it's also responsive as you can see. So I'm gonna show you how to make this responsive while using SAS, all right? So again, uh, if you wanna get more into intermediate to advanced level stuff, First watch this, and then you're gonna have a really strong footing because we're gonna get into variables, nesting, mix-ins, and functions. Uh, and, and you'll see that it really helps you just, um, it, it's, it's CSS on steroids, essentially. All right, so I'm gonna explain it as best I can, and we're gonna do all based on this project here. All right, so today's question is, what other learning resources outside of this YouTube channel do you learn from? Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll answer that very question myself in the content uh, in the comments here in the very first uh, pinned comment. Uh, go ahead and leave your comment as well, and let's get started. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here in your console, your command line. I'm using cmder.net console, console emulator for Windows. It's free. Um, and I'm in my project folder, and we're just gonna make a new folder, make directory, um, we'll call it sassy, <laughs> and then we'll CD into it or hop into it afterwards. All right, so at this point, when you're creating a new project, um, you, if it's a node-based project, you would use npm init, and that would create a package JSON file for you, which will then store your project dependencies, including de development dependencies, and SAS would be included as a development dependency. Now, there are different things like Gulp, which can handle compiling your SAS, as well as Webpack and a few others, but I'm not going to use that method. We're going to use Visual Studio Code instead and use a live SAS compiler um, which is an extension for Z Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is very popular for writing code, and it's from Microsoft, and it's free. All right, uh, so that's what I'm going to use. So we're not going to do this whole uh, Node stuff. So instead, I'm just going to put in code period, and that will load up Visual Studio Code in the current fo folder right here, which you can see is now blank. All right, so I'm going to create real quickly an index.html file, and I'm going to, going to hit uh, an exclamation point, and that will give us some quick boilerplate HTML code. And inside of here, we're going to reference the CSS file that uh, we'll use for this project. So we'll put it in a folder called CSS, and then forward slash main.css. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, why isn't that a SAS file, like SCSS file, if we're going to be writing uh, SAS? Well, that's because SAS is compiled into CSS. So if you're new to SAS, you'll figure out what this means exactly momentarily. All right, so uh, right here is good. We'll save this. And then we'll also create a new folder, our CSS folder. And inside of here, we're gonna create a main.scss, which is the SAS extension. All right, great. So at this point, we need a way to uh, pre-compile this SAS code that we're about to write. And like I said, you can use something like Gulp and you can, and that would really just extend beyond the scope of this tutorial. I just want to focus on writing and understanding SAS. Um, but so what we'll do is just use an extension for Visual Studio Code. 
All right, so if you go to Google and you type in um, Visual Studio Code Live SAS Compiler, you'll get this URL right here, and you can install it. You can click Install, and then it'll say Open in Visual Studio Code. Um, I already have it installed, as you can see, but this will normally be, a, I think, a green Install button. You click Install, and then you hit Reload, and it reloads uh, everything here that you see, um, and it'll be installed. Uh, at that point, you'll see down here a Watch SAS button. Uh, because we have a SAS file selected. So all we have to do is just click Watch SAS, and we can see this output, and this will give us any type of warnings or errors with our SAS code down in this output section. Um, and you could just, uh, you can also minimize this or, or close out of it if you want. I'll just kind of leave it down here. And now I, you can see that it automatically generated uh, a map file, which we don't have to worry about. But we can also see the main CSS file. So when we're writing, uh, we're working with a project that has CSS that is based on SAS, we don't modify this CSS file because any changes in here will be overwritten automatically when we save the, the changes in our SAS file. So in our SAS file, we can write you know, we can use the features of SAS, but also just regular CSS. So, you know, theoretically, I could just write out a uh, complete plain CSS in here, and it would all get compiled regularly in our main CSS file. But that doesn't make sense. Obviously, we're using SAS because we want to use some features that aren't really readily available in uh, regular CSS. All right, so the first thing we'll cover, and before we get into the project uh, of actually do developing this landing page, is variables in SAS. It's a very, it's the most simple thing. And what's interesting is, you know, now that the, the internet has matured since the release of SAS and CSS has matured, we can actually use variables in CSF, CSS, sorry, CSS, native CSS, without using a precompiler like SAS or something like that. Um, right now at the current time of uh, recording this tutorial, it's at 87% usage uh, availability in, in, in browsers. So if you wanna know what it is, you go to caniuse.com and you just type in variables and then CSS variables right here. And these are otherwise known as custom properties. And you can see it's at 87.52%. So there'll still be about, you know, 16.5% of people who won't be able to see, uh, you know, the, the CSS natively that are, that are um, depending on uh, variables or custom properties. So you can still use SAS for variables, even though they're pretty widely supported already. Um, and this way, it will absolutely ensure that everyone can see it because it takes those variables and it doesn't make them variables anymore in the main CSS file. So let's just show you how this works. So we'll say, for instance, we have a, a variable called my color, and the convention is very typical. I'm going to hit Control B, by the way, to get rid of the sidebar. Um, we'll call it my color, and we'll give it a value. All right. So the 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 name of the variable is I uh, prefixed here with a uh, the cache sign here, all right? And then we put a, a colon and we say, all right, we put a value of some sort. If it's a color, we'll just put a hex value um, or you could use RGBA or any of the other um, ways to define colors in CSS. And we'll just say 005 DFF. And so just a regular blue color. Then we'll say body. This is regular CSS here at this point. We'll say background color and then we'll just say, instead of giving it a value, we'll say my color up top. All right, so now this, of course, is will not work in regular CSS. So if we save it, hit Control B, we go back to our main CSS file, we can now see what has happened is it transformed this my color. We don't even see this variable. As you can see, it's gone. All we see is this body color, and it says, the value that is attached to this variable. And so this is handy because if we have a color theme, for instance, that is uh, this color that's widely used throughout the site, we only have to define it up here once. And if we want to change it, we only have to change it once. All right. So um, we can also use what are called SAS maps. And if you're familiar with JavaScript uh, objects, which have property value pairs, uh, this is the same sort of thing when it comes to SAS, uh, SAS maps. And instead of calling them property value pairs, you can call them key value pairs. 
All right, so for instance, uh, what would be really handy is usually when you're working with a site, you're developing a site, um, you have a color theme. You have multiple colors. You have a primary color, you have an accent color, uh, background color, lighter variations of these colors, whatever. You have multiple of these colors, multiple things, right? Well, you can use this SAS map. So the way we do this is we'll create a normal variable, except this is gonna be based on a SAS map, colors, plural, and we open it up here in our curly braces. And then inside of here, just like a regular JavaScript object, we put in, let's say for instance, we'll call this one primary. And this time we get rid of the actual, um, the, the dollar sign here. We just put the name only. And then we put the values, except with us, without a semicolon, we put a comma. So now we can put multiple, oh, and by the way, these aren't curly braces. That's why it was showing a, a little squig, squiggly bracket, bracket right there. Um, and so now we could put multiple values in this colors SAS map. And so I'll show you also how we can reference this because it does change up a little bit uh, for the values in terms of how you reference it. So now um, we'll say we'll have an accent color of FFF6BB. All right, and so that, by the way, uh, is just th this color right here from our Adobe XD, this, this right here, this sort of yellow color right there. All right, so now how do we reference this? And by the way, we could put as many of these as we wish um, inside of the SAS map. So now the way we get a specific uh, uh, value here, or property, or in other words, a key, it would be map hyphen get and then we pass it in like a function here or, or arguments and we pass in in the first argument the name of our sas map which is colors because we can have multiple so we have to specify which and then the key that we want so primary just like that all right so now real quickly i'm going to control b there's also something that we're going to use another plugin if we right click open with live server, um, if you don't have this option, just uh, go to Google and type in live server uh, extension for Visual Studio Code and you can install that and reload and you'll have the option. So now once we do this, it'll open on port, uh, I have mine set custom to 5501, but normally it is 5500, I believe. And here it is. So now whenever we make an, an update to our project, it's gonna refresh. And we can see now that this works. And if we look at our main CSS, even despite having changed up from a regular variable to a SAS map, it still looks exactly the same. It's really, a SAS map is really just there to help us uh, in terms of organizing the, the, uh, the, and working with our code here. All right, so now what I wanna do is, let's start actually focusing on creating this project right here. Now we're going to follow the whole convention and the pattern of uh, mobile first. So we're going to first design and, and structure our CSS based on mobile first, meaning we're going to create this variation here first before we do responsive media queries for this over here. All right. So um, the very first thing is our background. We could see that it's a uh, um, it's not just a regular flat background. We have sort of this uh, polygonal sort of slanted thing happening here. And there's a really handy free tool, a web-based tool that can help us generate what's called a CSS clip path. Now this isn't specific to SAS or anything, um, but I wanna show you how this works. So uh, I'm gonna get this URL up over here. All right, it's benefitfeely.com or Bennett the two T's, feely.com forward slash clippy. And if you just go to CSS, if you go to Google and type CSS clip path generator, you'll find the same result. And this is really cool and handy um, because what we wanna do is kind of recreate this shape right here. And if you think about it, it's one, two, three, four, five different points. So we could start off with a Pentagon and then simply recreate that general shape as seen here. And if we want the dimensions or the, pr the proportions from width and height to match up a little bit more close to this uh, I iPhone X resolution, we can come down here and just change the height portion 
um, to maybe like 600. All right, so now you can kind of look at that and we'll just push this down a little bit further and a little bit in. And yeah, that's good right there. So then at the bottom, we could see we have this clip path code. And that's exactly what this just generated. And that's the only property we need. We don't even have to include the, the uh, prefix because we have uh, um, this, uh, the, it'll automatically, this live SAS compiler will automatically generate the gender, or <laughs> not the gender, but the uh, browser, the vendor prefixes for us. Oh, it's late. And so here's how we'll do this. Uh, what we'll do is let's first, before we get to that part, put in body and then HTML, and we're going to set the height to 100%. And this is going to be necessary for helping us um, under, uh, really get that full uh, background going and working properly. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to put in font family. We'll say Montserrat. I have this already installed on my, she my machine. So um, if you don't, you're going to need to go to google.com forward slash fonts if you want to use the same font and then um, find Montserrat and then import it up top with their import code. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll put margin zero to get rid of it, the default margin um, that's added uh, by the browser on the body element. And then we'll also, for the first time, do something else that's, that's very handy, and that is nesting. So right now, nesting is not supported natively in CSS. It will be shortly, but not now. And so what I mean in nesting is, for instance, let's uh, write out a little bit of uh, HTML to get us started here. We'll put in just simply a div ID equals uh, BG for background. And that will hold our background, um, our blue polygonal background. So we'll save this here. And then what we can do is nest it inside of the body element. And we can reference that. So we could just put BG. And there we go. Natively in CSS, this would not work. You can't do this. This would have to be outside here, outside of this body element. But SAS makes this easy. And you'll see once we update it how it will change that into the regular CSS. So this is just helpful for, for organizational purposes, being able to nest. So this is where we paste in that clip path right there. But we also have to add a few other properties like background color. And we're going to use our map hyphen get colors and primary. That's the same code that we had earlier. We're going to make the width 100%, the height 100%. And we'll put position uh, absolute, and we're doing this with Z index so that uh, the stuff that's, it'll be in the absolute background basically. Um, and that way the stuff on the foreground will be on top of it. Um, you can see we have that success down there. And we go back to our document and there we go. All right, so real quickly, I'm gonna hit Control Shift I here in Chrome. And we're gonna click on this little toggle device toolbar when we're on iPhone X. So now we'll just keep on, we'll refer to this version going forward. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so let's look at this main.css file after you know having our first nesting experience. Uh, you can see that it's not inside of body, the, the BG element. It's simply manip it, it adjusted it so that uh, we have a body and then BG right in here, uh, right afterwards. So. Um, you can also see it automatically generated the prefix for us, so then we, we didn't have to copy both of those lines, and we don't have to add uh, vendor prefixes. So very, very handy and helpful stuff. All right. All right, excuse me. All right, so now let's continue writing um, the HTML that's necessary for all this to take place right here. And don't worry, it's not that much. And, and none of this has anything to do with SAS at this point. Um, so if you want to, I mean, there's gonna be a GitHub repo for this in the description of the YouTube video. You can just uh, clone it or download the zip file and just co copy and paste to see it, the HTML if you don't wanna follow this. Um, but really, it's not gonna be much. So we're gonna have a header element with an A href going nowhere with our zoom zoom. I don't even know what I was thinking with that name, our zoom zoom uh, anchor text. We're gonna use an, a main element, and then um, we'll have two section elements. So section ID, we'll say is card. 
that'll be that'll house this right here, this white part. And then the second uh, section will be for this stuff down here, the headline, subheadline, and call to action button. All right, so um, inside section ID, we're gonna have an unordered list for those little chat things, I guess you can call them, with a list item and then um, a span. Now the span is just gonna be there to help us generate the nece necessary markup for these little things right here. Um, normally those would be like uh, an image or something for an avatar, uh, but I'm not messing around with that. Um, we're just gonna make empty span elements. You could use, by the way, uh, the pseudo class of before with the content property to generate these, but just to keep the markup more similar to how it normally would be, I'm just gonna put some uh, tags here. All right, and then we're gonna put in strong, and how may I help you, bro? <laughs> oh man, I need to think of better content. And then I'm just going to copy that and paste it three times, and then I'll just really quickly, um, I'll just copy this off screen. I don't feel like typing. I don't know if I can be helped, and that's deep, let me help. Um, Something like that, uh, I think will be pretty, yeah, that'll be pretty good, just like that. Um, and then finally, um, after that, we have our second section. And we're just gonna call this one primary. And then we're going to put an H1. So your personal assistant, if I can type, there we go, a paragraph element for our subheadline, and this will be get help with your daily life stuff. All right, good. And then finally, just one more, and we'll be done. So this is gonna be href going nowhere, get help already. This is our call to action button. That's it. So now if we save this, it's gonna look like crap. So let's make it look good with the help of SAS. All right, so if we go here back to our main SAS file, one thing, I, another concept that I wanna introduce that's specific to SAS are functions. And functions are relatively new in the SAS world. Um, I think roughly just about a year, even though SAS is quite old. Um, and basically they are what they are. They're, they're functions that you can use. So you define a function name along with arguments that are acceptable into that function and then you return something based on the values that were input or the arguments. So for instance, uh, and there's a lot of different use cases for functions. I'm not gonna go into them. You can use Google to, you know, to, to, to figure out potential use cases where functions can be helpful. One such use case here is um, this, for instance. This is not pretty. Um, this whole map hyphen get and then having to specify first the name of the SAS map and then the key that you want. Um, to make this a little bit better looking, what we can do is we can make this function up here. So the function, the way we create one is we put the at sign and then name function. All right, so it's always that. And then we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call this one just simple, something that's that makes relevant sense and it would be color. So color will accept simply one argument and that will be color hyphen name. And you can name this whatever you want. All right, so then inside of it, we use at return and then we're gonna return map hyphen get. So really we're just using this as a proxy to call map get and do all this ugly stuff here. So we're gonna put map get and we're gonna pass in, we're gonna hard code the name colors up top uh, for the SAS map. So we're not gonna have to specify that anymore because this is only gonna accept one argument. And then the color name, which is that's gonna be the thing that we specify as an argument for this function. All right, so just like this, that's our function. So now this can go ahead and completely get changed to simply, I'll start from scratch color, that's the name of our function, and which color do we want? Well, we want a primary, right? Because we could see up here, we want primary. So we simply pass in primary. All right, so now we can go ahead and save this, and we could see it still worked. And you could check that and verify that right here. 
and yes it did. So now this is a lot more friendly and now you know how to use functions here in SAS. All right, good, good stuff. So let's continue on here and uh, we're, we're gonna get into the responsive stuff after we get the mobile first stuff ready. So uh, looking at this nesting thing, uh, what is it next that we need to specify um, some markup for? So let's look at our current so let's start at the top, which is um, the logo. That is not what this document looks like. We want it to look like that. All right, so let's create the rule set for that. And we can nest this as well because it's inside of the body element. And it's inside of header and A. Nothing's happening with our header element, so we can just put in header space A just like that. All right, so now we'll make the color of it white text decoration we're going to say none that gets rid of the default uh, text underline that uh, it adds let's also create another um, variable or a variable up here called padding all right and padding will be 15 pixels all right so again it can accept any type of property value when it comes to uh, the uh, variables that we have defined up here. So padding equals padding, whatever. And then um, we'll go ahead and continue on. We're gonna put in display block and text decoration uppercase to transform everything uppercase. So let's save this and now let's check it out. Much better, much more consistent with what we're, we're working with. All right, so now we could keep on nesting a bunch of levels in uh, but usually the convention is is not to add too many different levels. Uh, so you can just come right back outside of the body element here that we've been working with, and we can just start fresh with the next element, which is the main element. Because as we can see, the main already has several levels deep um, of, of elements that are nested there. So we'll just say main. I don't really have any markup for main, but we'll just leave, we'll leave it there as a starting point. And we're going to reference the next element in our HTML, which is section ID card. So section card, all right? And inside of here, this is, in, this is right here, this section right here. And how many times am I gonna say here? I don't know. All right, so now we're gonna have background white for that. Padding will be 20 pixels. I'm gonna make that um, a little bit bigger than the other padding. Um, margin 1EM on the top and bottom and auto on the right and left and that will center it. And then we'll put in border radius. And I'm gonna make another one called borders, a, a variable. So just above here, we'll say, well, beneath it, no big deal, borders. We're gonna make that 15 pixels as well. And the reason I wouldn't just use the same is because I wanna give myself flexibility in the future if I wanna adjust these two different properties. All right, so borders is there. And then we're gonna put in, let's see here. A, yeah, box shadow, because I have a shadow on it. So we're gonna put zero um, on the X value. On the Y value, we're gonna push it down 10 pixels and then a blur radius of 30 pixels. And then the color, we'll, we're gonna use RGBA and we'll say black, which is zero, zero, zero and then opacity will be 0.2 for this shadow. And then finally, we'll make the width 80%. So let's save that and see what happens now. Looking a lot closer, so now let's work on this unordered list. So we'll nest this, this element UL um, for unordered list, and this will simply have two properties, and that will be list style type none, that gets rid of those little uh, circles, and then we'll also put margin zero and padding zero as well. So now the result, um, we got rid of those. And then let's go ahead and we'll reference our list item element, which comes next. Margin bottom, we're just gonna push them away by 10 pixels. And then also our span element, which is for the circles. So we're gonna make this position absolute and we're gonna put content and we're gonna make it empty. We're gonna put width 30 pixels, height 30 pixels, background color is gonna be color, and then we're gonna create a new key. 
and it's going to be primary hyphen light. By the way, this content thing, I don't think I had to add that. I was using um, this different technique before, uh, and I was looking off screen. I don't think I, we really need that because we used a span element. Um, so this primary light key, I uh, let's go ahead back up to our uh, our colors up here, and we're going to make another one called primary hyphen light, and we're going to use the lighten uh, function here. And this isn't specific to uh, to SAS; it's already in CSS itself. And then we can just pass in this value, and we'll lighten it up here by 40%. And the reason I'm doing this is because I we're using lighten instead is just we could just change these values right here um, and the lighten will work no matter what. So I'm not dealing with different um, hex value colors. So let's continue on I with background color. So um, all right, so we have border radius 50% now I'll make it a circle and then margin right will be 10 pixels. Let's save that. All right, still not there yet. We have to fix it. So also we have a strong element right here. So that comes nested in the LI as well, just underneath span. And this will be strong. And we're going to display, display inline hyphen block. It's going to push it over. Margin left will be max. We're going to use the max uh, function here, 40 pixels. And then margin top. And by the way, the max function is not specific to SAS either. That's already in CSS. All right, so there we go. Coming along quite well. Awesome. Now let's work on the other stuff at the bottom beneath that. And inside of main, we're going to nest in the next section. So just right here, we're going to put in section primary. And we're going to do color. It's going to be white. Padding is going to be our padding again. And then text align, we're going to center everything because we're working with mobile right now at the moment. All right. Uh, then after that, we're going to have an H1 with the font size of 3EM, a margin top of 10 pixels, and a text transform of uppercase. So let's save this and see what's going on. Getting better, getting real close to being finished with the mobile version. All right, um, and then next we have our paragraph element. And the paragraph, we're just going to make this slightly larger, 1.4 EM. And then also our call to action button text. Um, and so this one has a lot of properties just to transform, you know, this ugly thing in over to this much more pretty looking thing. So let's go ahead and add those. It's going to be uh, color, is going to be um, color and primary hyphen dark key. So we haven't created that. Let's go create that real quick. I'll just copy this line. So shift alt in the down arrow key, change this to dark. And then this is going to be darken and by 40%, same thing. All right, so primary dark. So now it's going to look almost the same as it did before, by the way. So uh, let's go on and I will continue by adding, after color, we'll have our border radius, borders, we already defined that. Text decoration is going to be none. Text transform will be uppercase, if I can type. And then font weight is going to be bold. Background color will be our color accent. We already defined that. It's that uh, light yellow. Display block. Text align will be center to center it up. The margin will be 50 pixels from the top auto and zero from the bottom and auto on the left and right to center it up. And then padding will be padding. And then we're going to include, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. That was for the responsive part. And that's it. All right, so now there we go. So we're real close, basically, um, to the this this version right here. I may have probably need a little bit more padding in order to make it more like this, but still, very 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 close. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome right here. So I can just move this over and very similar. Oh, text transform uppercase was. Um, we need to apply that on the uh, the logo. Where did that go? Um, let's see here. 
where is it? We have our logo, which is header A. So let's find header A, text. Ah, I use text decoration, text transform. There we go. Now it will be uppercase. That's much better. Sorry about that. All right, so this is pretty good um, for the most part. Yeah, awesome stuff. So now, uh, how would we make this responsive? Uh, because for instance, if we get out of this um, de device toolbar and we start going like this on a desktop, that just looks stupid, right? So um, with the help of SAS, we can make the process of um, responsive design with media queries um, a little bit better than it is when you're just dealing with straight up CSS. All right, so the uh, next topic that we're gonna talk about here that's specific to SAS are mix-ins. All right, so mix-ins uh, are very handy, especially um, if you're gonna use them and there's a lot of different use cases for them. I'll just show you one use case and that will be when we're de dealing with media queries. All right, so um, basically, uh, having a, a, a media query um, and, and, and just typing it straight out like normal um, could be very verbose or you know very wordy um, in, in, when you're doing it in, in each of these um, areas and in, in these rule sets. Um, so we can create a mix-in that will make um, and simplify the coding as it appears in here. So what we'll do is first we're going to define a variable and that will define a pixel-based value for a breakpoint. Um, and so what I'm talking about is, you know, if you're not really familiar with responsive design and you're new, um, what I'm talking about, if you have control shift I here in Chrome open or, or, or uh, Firefox, um, we'll see if we, we expand this, the left side, we can see this pixel value 644 and it, it changes and it shows up when we're adjusting. It's letting us know how, you know, what the width and the height is of the, the current viewport. Um, and we have to de determine as designers at which point should this design change in some way. All right. So, um, and for our case, we have to ask ourselves at which point should it go from this to this? You know, at which point do we have enough room to have two columns instead of just stacking everything like on the mobile view? All right. So, I. Uh, at a certain point, this may start to look a little bit strange. So we have to determine, you know, what or when would that point be? So this is more like of a tablet size right here. Um, I would say right around 840 is probably a good way, area to change this into a two column layout. So let's go ahead and define that variable right here. This is just a simple variable. We'll call it desktop and we'll say 840 pixels, just like that. Now we're going to define a mix in for a media query. So mix in. So just like function, you want to create a function, you put at function for a mix in, it's at mix in, and then the name, desktop. All right. So then we put in the normal property value for a, a mix in, uh, or not, or sorry, for a media query. So we're going to put media and we're going to put min width. So the minimum width is going to be this variable. So the way we put a variable in a mix in is we're going to put in this. Uh, the hash sign with the squiggly braces along with the name here, desktop. All right, so then we open it up and we put in at content. And the content's going to be based on whatever we specify when we use the, the mixin. So you'll see how this works in a second. So that's all our mixin is. And you could create multiple mix-ins here for multiple viewports um, and, and sizes. We're just going to use desktop, um, just one of them essentially. So now let's work with our very first uh, media query using this mix-in and we're going to focus on the BG element. So nested in BG is going to be this mix-in and we're going to do it by putting include, add include desktop. So that's the name of our mix-in. So that's how we use mix-ins in rule sets. And then we just put in the regular properties for a media query, you know, what, what do we, how exactly do we want to change the BG element for, uh, when the viewport or the, you know, the, the width of the device or the browser is a minimum width of 840 pixels. What, what are we going to change? All right. So looking at our, our uh, Adobe XD document, we'll see that this actually does change. The shape of this clip path changes from a, um, 
not a hexagon. What am I talking about? But a five a five pointed side here here uh, to here, which is just you know four points. So we have to go back to our little clippy thing over here. And what the heck was that? Yeah, a pentagon. Uh, I'm very slow. Uh, I didn't pay attention to geometry. But anyhow, we're, we're going to go um, from that to just a uh, a trapezoid, for instance. And so now let's change this uh, more to a desktop orientation, like a, um, a canvas mode. So we'll put like 500 here. So now I think it was something like this. I mean, if we look back at our Adobe document, yeah, maybe more like this. Yeah, something like that. That's close enough. Copy clip path right here. We'll go back and we're simply going to change. We're just going to put that in right here. That's it. Let's give it a go. I hope it works. So now, there it goes. Uh, why is it going up to 890 or 924? I put it at 840. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going here. Um, oh, it's because I probably have that. Yeah, there we go. I was zoomed up by accident. So now right at 840, it changes. But we're not done there. We have other things that we need to do. So um, for instance, uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna use this again. So let's copy this. We're not gonna use this property, but just this, uh, this mix in here. So we're gonna use it in several areas wherever it makes sense to do this. So for our main element, our main element, um, we didn't need to on desktop uh, or on mobile uh, to use any type of a grid for alignment because they're just stacked on top of each other naturally. But in here, this main the main element houses these two sections or these two columns. So on desktop, they're going to float left and right of each other. And we can use the CSS grid for that for for you know creating that. You know, if you're unfamiliar with, the, with what the CSS grid is, by the way, I have a bunch of videos on my channel about the CSS grid and how you can use it to position and structure your layouts. It's it's the best, latest thing. All right, so uh, what we'll do is we didn't put any properties here for our main element, but we're going to have a property for it or multiple properties um, just for desktop only. So again, we put at include desktop and we nest it in there and we're gonna say display grid and then the grid template columns and this is all css grid stuff 50 percent auto and that'll make it basically both 50 percent and then grid template areas we're going to say we're going to give them a name so the first column name is going to be primary and the second co uh, column name will be card all right and then for section card we're going to put at include our desktop mix in again and we're going to say the grid area name for this one is the card. And then we're going to put height is fit hyphen content and align self center with a margin of 1EM. And then also we'll have another mix in for our second uh, section right here. So add include desktop. Let's get rid of that. This grid area, this is going to be defined as the the primary uh, grid area name, which we defined up here in the main section right here, primary and card. And then where are we at? Yep. And then we're going to put text align left because it's centered currently on mobile. And that's the headline, the subheadline. We're going to put margin 4EM at the top, zero on the bottom or on the right and bottom right here, and then 4EM on the left. And that's going to just push it down and away from the side of the browser. Um, let's save this, by the way, so far to see what's happening. See, now we can see we're going from this to that. And wow, we're pretty much already there almost. Uh, there's a couple other things. Like I'm going to change the um, H1 value a little bit here. So we'll have another mix in. I'm just going to copy that, and paste it here. And so for H1 value, I want to change the width here to 30%, to shrink a little bit so each line is, or each word is on its own line. We're going to put font size here of 4EM, make it a little bit larger, and line height will be 0.9EM to bring them a little bit closer together like that. Yeah. All right. And then also we'll have one more in our, uh, our call to action button text here. Add include desktop. 
And this one, we're gonna say display inline block, and then the padding, and, and inline block applied to this will make it so that it doesn't span 100% of the uh, parent container. And then in the padding, we're going to have another specific thing to, to uh, SAS, which is we're gonna put padding, and then padding times four. And so what this will do is on the top and bottom, we'll have a regular padding, on the right and left, it's gonna take that padding and multiply it because you can do math and SAS um, by, uh, by four. So I think it's 15 times four. And now we have this button down here, which has been changed. Awesome, awesome stuff. So definitely, uh, that was definitely a crash course, I have to say. Um, hopefully that you guys I uh, gained a lot from that, but that, that's basically it for the crash course. Um, and we covered really a lot of stuff that's pertinent in, in, in most of this stuff when it comes to functions, mix-ins, um, nesting, and variables. That's pretty much the most of what you will use from SAS. Now, of course, there's a, a lot of other more intermediate to advanced topics, but for a, a crash course, hopefully that will really be enough to get your feet wet and started using SAS. All right, guys, hopefully you learned a lot throughout that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also answer today's question, which is what other learning resources outside of this channel do you learn from? Also, be sure to check out this video sponsor, Skillshare.com. Let's go.